Welcome to part two of this tutorial for creating Flappy Bird in Godot. In part one, we made the background, the camera and the scrolling ground. And in this video, we'll be creating the pipes, making them scroll and giving them a random height. So let's get coding, shall we? Alrighty, for the pipes, we'll be creating one kinematic body 2D with two sprites, the top and the bottom part. So let's just do that. We'll add a child node here to the main and it will be a kinematic body 2D and then just rename this to pipe and we'll add here uh, two sprites one for the top part and one for the bottom part like this now I'll just rename this top and this uh, bottom and then we'll drag the correct texture into both of these. And this is going to be this one here called pipe.png in there and in there. So let's fix a couple of things. First, we need to scale it up a little bit. So, and then we do it here in the uh, kinematic body itself. So I'll just go to the transform here and scale it up by a factor of three to make it consistent with the pixel graphics on the other things that we scaled up like this and then we need to uh, change the position of the top and the bottom part so let's put the top part up here by maybe oh sorry by minus 50 here on the y direction and the bottom part down by 50 okay let's do more 100 150 Okay, so that's good. Uh, we could tweak this a little later to uh, make the game harder or easier, but that's fine for now. And then we need to flip this top part and we can do that by putting the scale here on the Y to minus one. So that will flip it around. To make the pipe scroll, we basically need to do the same thing that we did to the ground. So we'll add a script here, like so. And we'll remove all the comments here because we don't need them. And we'll add the scroll speed variable here with the same value as for the ground. Now we could do the same thing now as we did before with the ground and just subtract the scroll speed times the delta from the global position dot x. And if you want to do that, feel free to go ahead. It will work just fine, but I will use another alternative now that we will also use in the next video when we add the bird. And that is to use a movement vector and a function that is built into the kinematic body 2D node, the move and slide function. So first we need to add a movement vector here and I'll call this a move vector and this will be of type vector2 vector2 and this will have two parameters the x velocity and the y velocity and the x velocity will be minus scroll speed and the y velocity will be zero like so okay now to make the pipe scroll all we need to do is call move and slide here in the process move and slide with the move vector as a parameter and when we use this function we won't need to think about the delta variable because this will do that for us automatically so let's try to run this now and see what happens so great this works as expected Now, if we have a look at the Flappy Bird game, we see that as soon as the pipe is out of sight on the left-hand side, it enters the screen on the right-hand side. So we want this to happen here as well, just as we did with the floor. Okay, let's have a look at this illustration here. The distance from the middle of the pipe where the X position is zero to the edge of the screen is half of 450, which is 225. And from the middle of the pipe to the edge of the pipe, it is 48 pixels because the pipe is 96 pixels wide. And if we add those two numbers together, we get 273. So that means that when the X position of the pipe is minus 273, the pipe has just exited the screen. So at that point, we would like to add the double of that, which is 546 to the X position. And that will place the pipe on the opposite side, just outside of the screen. So let's do that in the code. 
Okay, so let's go in the script and we will just write here if global position dot x is less than minus 273 we will add 546 to this and let's run this and see if that works so that seems to work fine Now we got ourselves a case of magic numbers here. So let's just fix that. Let's make two variables here. First, the uh, screen width equals 450 and the pipe width, uh, which is 96. And let's use that in the code down here. So that will be here minus uh, screen, sorry, screen width plus pipe width divided by two and here screen screen width plus pipe width so that should work the same way yeah good so that makes the code a little bit more readable if we look at the Flappy Bird game again, we see that the pipes are coming in at varying heights and we want that to be the case in our game as well. So let's make that. And for that, we need to use random numbers and we do that by making a variable here called RND and instancing the random number generator like this. And then we need to initialize that by calling the randomize function here randomize like that let's now make a new function in which we'll set the pipe height and i'll just call this set pipe height and for now i'll just set the pipe height to zero global position dot y equals zero and for this to work i need to call it here in the ready function which calls when the uh, program starts set pipe height and I also need to call it here every time the the pipe is reset to the right hand position so for us to set the height to a random value I'll go down here to the set pipe height and for the sake of uh, avoiding magic number and making the code more readable I'll just make two variables down here um, one minimum height minimum pipe height uh, which I'll put at minus 150 and a maximum pipe height which I'll put to 50 sorry 120 here so these are numbers that I've experimented with and I found these numbers work fine you can adjust these to whatever you feel is good and now to make a random number we'll call here a function in the random number generator called rand i range rand i range and this takes two parameters and it will generate a random integer in between those numbers so i'll just plug in here minimum pipe height and maximum pipe height and that should generate a random number between minus 120 and 50 so let's run this and see how that works. Okay, cool. Now the pipes are set at a random height. All right, as we see now in our game here, there are in fact two sets of pipes on the screen and we want that as well. So let's do the same thing we did with the floor. So let's go here and save this branch as a scene and I'll call it pipe and then just let's just duplicate this like so and of course we can't have both of them on top of each other so i'll just change the x value of one of them here under transform so i'll just put here 273 and then we don't want them to start here so i'll just add 1000 to both of them this and this one here oh sorry 1000 so we see they start out here now 
and then we'll add a container node for them both here like so I'll call it pipes and I'll put both of these in there all right so we are now nearing the end of part two of this tutorial but before we take a break I'd just like to fix one thing and that is the fact that the pipes are now showing on top of the ground sprites and we don't want that we want them to be behind and there is a super quick fix for that and that is just to drag these pipes above the floors here and that should sort that out that concludes part two of our tutorial and in the next one we'll finally be adding the most important part of our game which is the bird so if you like this tutorial click like if you want more tutorials like this or if you want devlogs for my upcoming game projects click subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in part three